Hello world and welcome to Hacks. In this video I'm going to be talking about how you can upgrade your Flipper Zero's functionality and use it as a Wi-Fi penetration testing tool. By default the Flipper Zero doesn't have any Wi-Fi capabilities, however with the addition of the Wi-Fi developer board you can add this functionality. The Wi-Fi developer board is rocking an ESP32-S2 module and with that module you can perform Wi-Fi penetration tests such as probing attacks, deauthentication attacks, SSID broadcast including Rick Rowland and a bit more. The Wi-Fi developer board can be bought from the official Flipper store if you're in the US for $29, however it's currently sold out. But as I'm in the UK, I purchased mine on June for $37.18 plus VAT and delivery. By default, the Flipper Zero Wi-Fi developer board does come with firmware installed. However, we want to flash Marauder to it to give us some more functionality. In order to do this, I would recommend heading over to this GitHub repository, Uber Guido's Flipper. And you can see there's a quick and easy flasher updater for Marauder on the Wi-Fi dev board. All you need to do is scroll down and go to the download zip file, and then that will start downloading the zip. Then once that's downloaded, you need to extract it and locate the flash.bat file. Now take your Wi-Fi developer board and press and hold the boot button, then plug the USB-C into the developer board and to your computer and hold the boot button for three seconds. With your Wi-Fi developer board plugged in and recognized, head back over to the files that you extracted and double click the flash.bat. You'll see the Windows protection pop up, but if you just click on more info and click run anyway, it will run the program. You'll see now that you now have the Marauder script up and running. If it hasn't recognized your Wi-Fi developer board, you won't see the options, but you should see four options, flash Marauder, update Marauder, save Flipper Blackmagic Wi-Fi settings, flash Flipper Blackmagic. The option we're going to go for is option one. If you just hit that and press enter, what will happen now is it will erase the firmware and go through writing the new Marauder firmware to your Wi-Fi developer board. And as you can see, it says that we can now close the window. It's important that you wait for this bit to finish and say that it's now safe to close the window to make sure that everything's been written to the device properly. It should now be safe to disconnect your developer board and plug it into your Flipper Zero. It's fairly easy to do. One side has eight pins, one side has 10 pins. Just make sure the chip is on the same side as the screen and plug it in. Now, before we go any further, what you'll need to do is install a different firmware for your Flipper Zero in order to give you Marauder functionality. So while the Marauder firmware has been flashed to your Wi-Fi developer board chipset, you still need the tools on your Flipper Zero in order to use the Wi-Fi developer board and Marauder. In my opinion, the best firmware for this at the moment is either the Unleashed firmware or the Rogue Master firmware. I have videos on my channel explaining how to install both of those different firmwares onto the Flipper Zero, so I'm not going to cover it here but feel free to go and watch one of those videos and then come back to where you were okay so now that you've got rogue master or the unleashed firmware installed on your flipper zero and you've got marauder installed on your wi-fi developer board it's time to go in and look at the different tools available to us that we can use now with our upgraded flipper zero so in order to access the tools we're just going to go to the main menu and go down until we find applications from applications we go into gpio and you can see there wi-fi marauder i will admit it's pretty hit and miss sometimes when i click this button it crashes the flipper but then other times it doesn't so i'm going to hit it now and see what happens so looking for the various options we have a view log form we have scan ap we have sisid we have list and it's good to note that these have sub menus as well so pressing left or right will allow you to list ap or list ssid we then have the option to select ap or ssid and this is important when launching attacks because you first need to select the ap or ssid that you want to attack you then have the option to clear the list so once you've scanned the access points it puts them into a list and if you want to clear this list you click on clear list then we have the different attack types we have a deauthentication attack a probe attack a rick roll attack then we have the beacon spam ap list ssid list and random then we have a bunch of sniffing options we got the beacon the deauthentication the esp pmk id pwn then we have a sniff pk pmk id channel and we have get channel or set channel and we have some display settings or restore settings or force pkmid force probe save pcap other and then we've got update reboot and help 
Okay, let's test out some other functionality, starting with scanning access points. So what this will do is if you click scan AP, it will launch a scan and look for all access points in your local area. And you can see that I'm starting to get packets back from the different access points. If I just press up, you should be able to see the SSID names. You see there's like a Virgin Media one there, starting VM12. Got mine there where it says Jozone 2 gigahertz. And what this will do is this will scan all the access points, get all the SSIDs, and pop them into a list for you and again the longer you leave it running the more access points it will find provided that those access points are in range it shows you like their beacon number the rssi uh, the name of it yeah very good information and again this will put it into a list which you can then use later to attack devices so once you finish scanning the access points what you can do is you can press back and then you can go to list I'm just going to change this to list access points rather than SSID and you should see there all the access points that it's found. Now if you notice there are numbers next to each of the access points. You've got four there which is my sort of separate Wi-Fi network another one for Virgin Media, you've got another of my Wi-Fi access points that are on number six, number seven. And it's important to remember the numbers. Granted, trying to remember the names can be a bit annoying if you, if you were trying to go after the access point via the name or via the SSID, but thankfully the developers of the Marauder firmware have put them into a list and given you numerical digits to remember them by, rather than actually having to try and remember the SSIDs. So yeah, that's the list. This list is populated from the scan AP attack that we did a moment ago and then once you've got all this information you can then use it to launch attacks against these specific access points so now that we have a list of access points let's select one so first of all I'm just gonna go through the list and I'm gonna find my access point which is number four then I'm gonna press back and go to select AP and then I'm just gonna click up and click four click save then I'm going to press back and back again. Then I'm going to go into list access points. And if we go down the list, what you should see now is that four has selected next to it, meaning that we've successfully selected the access point that we want to attack. Now again, I did it via the numerical value. You didn't have to type in the name at all. Then what we can do is now that we've selected it, we can go on to launch attacks against that access point. If you wanted to unselect the access point, all you have to do is go back in and go up to the same number, type in four, which was the access point, click save, press back, press back again, and then you can go to list access points and you'll see that my Wi-Fi network is no longer selected. Okay, moving on to the good stuff. Let's start looking at the attacks. So first of all, we're going to list our APs and I'm going to see that I have my network of four Joseph Wi-Fi network because you shouldn't be attacking other people's networks on this. Again, that would be illegal without the permission of the person that you're attacking. So I need to select four. So I'm just going to go back and select AP, pop in number four, click save, back out. Then I'm just going to go into my list and check that I have the right access point selected, which I do because again, you don't want to attack somebody that you don't have permission to attack. Now I'm going to head down to attack and the first attack I'm going to do is a Rick roll attack. Now, I'm not sure why you need to have an access point selected for this one. Um, you do have to have one selected, otherwise the attack doesn't start. But this doesn't actually attack a specific access point as far as I know. I used to have a standalone sort of chipset, which you could power into like a portable battery pank and it had the same functionality and it had this attack and what this attack does is it creates a lot of SSIDs just by broadcasting SSID data and what it will do is it will broadcast the lyrics of the song never going to give you up um, by whatever it's called Rick Astley you know the Rick roll everybody talks about but yeah I don't know why you need an access point selected for this attack but if I click start the attack you can see there press back to send stop scan attacking hyphen t rick roll start stop rick roll so on and so forth so now what it's doing is it's broadcasting the lyrics of uh, never gonna give you up by rick astley out to the instant well, out to the local area where everyone can see it so anybody who picks up their phone trying to connect to an access point now will get rick rolled by the ssids what i will do is i'll put a screenshot and an overlay of this video to show you what the sort of SSIDs all look like. But yeah, that is the Rick Roll attack.
Now that we're done rick rolling people, all we have to do is just send the back signal button. And what we're going to look at next is the deauthentication attack. So first of all, I need to go back to my list and make sure that my Wi-Fi is still selected. Fantastic. And then I'm going to go down to attack and change it to deauthentication or deauth attack. And what you'll see there is it will start sending packets to the access point. Deauthentication attacks are used in wireless attacking. Um, they can be considered a type of jamming technique. But the way it's happening is it's sending the authentication packets to the access point. Now, normally I thought you had to spoof the deauthentication pack from the client in order to tell the access point that it's deauthenticating. And the reason why you would do that in wireless hacking is so that you can capture the handshake. When a client attempts to connect to a wireless access point, they do a four-way handshake. And in that packet that it sends to the wireless access point, it will contain a hash of the password that you use to connect to the access point. So when you do a deauthentication attack, you disconnect a client from the wireless network and then they have to reconnect sending the authentication to the wireless access point again. Then you intercept that communication, allowing you to intercept the hash, which you can then take the hash and crack it offline, which could give you access to the wireless access point. So looking at the actual GitHub repository, it's called a Dior flood, and it says the ESP32 is capable of transmitting specifically crafted Wi-Fi packets. Before executing a Dior flood on the ESP32 Marauder, you must build a list of available access points, which we did, and select which access point to target. See scan APs and select APs for more details on how to build a target list. Okay, so we selected our access point. Once a proper target list has been built, a Dior flood can be executed by simply selecting the menu option. The packet transmission rate will be displayed on the screen. The attack can be ended by touching the screen. Now, the more target networks selected, the less effective the attack will be. More networks means more time must be taken in order to send the packets to each network point so it doesn't elaborate that much on what it's trying to do no criticism at all again i love this tool and it's been great in my experience i haven't actually been able to deauthenticate a device from my network using this tool and i only have one network selected and it's a wi-fi to 2 gigahertz and i have my laptop connected to my network and i use the deauth flood but at no point did it ever disconnect. I'm not sure if I need to run the attack longer, but again, I had it running for a very long time and it didn't deauthenticate. So perhaps I'm missing something here, but that is the deauthentication attack. I believe it's used to try and jam the access point and deauthenticate clients from it but I've not had much luck with it so far. So the next attack we're going to talk about is the probe request flood. The ESP32 is capable of transmitting specifically crafted Wi-Fi packets. Before executing the probe request flood on the ESP32 Marauder, you must build a list of available access points and select which access point to target. See scan AP and select APs for more details on how to build a target list. Once a proper target list has been built, a probe request flood can be executed by simply selecting the menu option. The packet transmission rate will be, disc will be displayed on the screen the attack can be ended by touching the screen note the more targets same as the deauthentication attack and what this attack does is it mimics a signal that's sent from devices when they want to connect to an access point so imagine your phone is just sat there and it isn't connected to a wi-fi network if you have Wi-Fi on, what it will do is it will automatically send out probe requests for Wi-Fi networks that it's remembered and previously connected to. Then, if one of these Wi-Fi access points that it's remembered responds back, it initiates the handshake and it can resume communications. Again, I'm probably butchering the explanation of the actual process and how the packets work, but that's essentially what a probe request is. And in order to launch a probe request attack, from the flipper zero with the wi-fi developer board what you have to do is go back and then go to your list and make sure that you have the correct access point selected and in this case i have my two gigahertz network selected then we're going to go down to attack and we're going to choose probe attack and we're going to click start i believe that this attack is just to try and confuse the access point and tie up resources there could be more to it than that but reading into it that's all i appear to have found on it so far but yeah that is the probe attack there there are more things to talk about that I'm not going to cover. For instance, the sniffing. You have the ability to sniff packets for various different types of hardware. Um, you can sniff for Ponagotchi. You can sniff for the deauthentication packets that we mentioned earlier and pro packets earlier. And I believe there's a way to actually save them into a PCAP, which you can then take off of the Flipper Zero and do 
some sort of inspection on them or if you've captured a handshake perhaps you can try and crack it on your rig. The installation process is really simple and it took about 10 to 20 minutes to get used to navigating around the menu and actually selecting an access point and launching an attack so it's very intuitive and very simple. There's a lot more I have to learn about wireless types of attacks to fully understand what it's attempting to do and what's going on and again I can look at the way that it's sort of crafting the packets in the github repository to try and identify a bit more but that's some research I'm going to do in my own time to better understand Wi-Fi attacks is something I'm still learning. I I know about the different types of attacks like evil twin and i know roughly how the sort of interaction between device and wireless access point works but i want to know them a bit more intimately to have a better understanding that is the wi-fi developer board for the flipper zero running the marauder firmware like i say it's got a lot of functionality and it's fun and i can't thank the developers enough for sort of getting it to the point where it actually works on the flipper zero let me know what you think do you have one do you have any tips or tricks for me do you have anything to share with anybody let post it down in the comments also let me know if you like this video by giving me a thumbs up and maybe you could subscribe but that's all i've got for you today i do hope you liked it thank you very much and kind regards